This topic is dividing polynomials, and we're going to do a quick review first of dividing a polynomial by a monomial. That means your denominator has just one term, a monomial. So in example one, we've got 15x squared minus 12x plus 6 divided by 3. The process for doing that is take your big fraction and split it into smaller fractions determined by however many terms there are in your numerator, and then you just cross cancel. We put each one over that same common denominator. So 3 goes into 15 5 times, so I have 5x squared. 3 goes into 12 4 times, 4x plus 2. Let's look at the second one where we have a variable in the denominator. I still just have a monomial in my denominator, so I'm going to split my fraction into three smaller ones. 5m cubed over 5m squared, minus 9m squared over 5m squared, plus 10m over 5m squared. And now we'll cross cancel. 5 goes into 5 once, both times. These two in the denominator cross out two of those, leaving just one. There were more m's in the numerator, so that's where the leftover m is. So what I have left in this term is just one m. Five won't go into nine, so I have to include that as just a fraction, but m squared and m squared cross out to make ones. Here, 5 goes into 10 two times, but notice there are more m's in the denominator here. So this m in the numerator crosses out one of those, and what's left is, be careful here, a 2 in the numerator and an m in the denominator. And it matters very much where you put those when you are finished. You always want to write them wherever they remain in the original fraction before you started cross-canceling. Looking at the next one, division by a monomial, we will take 8xy squared and put it over x squared y squared, minus 9x squared y over x squared y squared, plus 6x squared y squared over x squared y squared. So again, I carried that monomial. I know there's two variables in it, but there's no plus or minus sign, so it's still a monomial. I carried it through to each of my three denominators. Here, this x crosses out one of those, and the y's cross cancel, and so what I have left is an 8 in the numerator and an x in the denominator. Here, x's cross cancel, and this y cross cancels one of those, so there is a 9 in the numerator and a y in the denominator. Here, x squareds cross cancel, y squareds cross cancel, and all I have left is a 6. So that's the easy division, division by a monomial. Now we're going to look at dividing a polynomial by a polynomial of two or more terms. We're going to limit it to two terms in these examples. So you notice that my denominator here is m minus 2. I can't split my fraction into three pieces over that common denominator and cross cancel. It just won't work. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to do regular old-fashioned long division. So you are going to write your division problem like this. m minus 2, which is my denominator, becomes my divisor. It's being divided into 2m squared plus m minus 10. And the way that you begin, and I'm going to use a couple different colors here because I think if I can coordinate this, I think it will help you. We start and we say, how many times does m go into 2m squared? We're just dividing the first term into the first term. And you know what? To keep those separate, I'm actually going to draw columns. This is for all the squared terms. This is for the m's that are not squared, and then just the plain numbers. So how many times does m go into 2m squared, or m into 2m squared? This m cross cancels one of those, and what I have left is 2m. That 2m has to go in the m column. It matters where it goes. So I put it here. 
Once I divide, my next step is to multiply, just like with any long division. So 2m times m is 2m squared. 2m times negative 2 is negative 4m. Now what you do is you are going to subtract. So we say draw the line, change the signs. That's how you subtract polynomials. You change to addition and change the signs on the polynomials that are being subtracted. 2m squared minus 2m squared. That makes a zero. That should happen in your first column every time. m plus 4m is 5m. And now we bring down. So I'm going to bring down that negative 10 and we start over. How many times does m go into 5m. Notice when I'm doing the division, I'm only doing first piece into first piece. So how many times does m go into 5m? It goes in 5 times and that is a positive 5. So now we multiply. 5 times m is 5m. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. I'm going to draw the line change my signs every time. That makes a zero, that makes a zero, and the answer to my division by the binomial m minus 2 is 2m plus 5. Let's try another one because this is not an easy thing um, often to follow. So let's look at your notes, example 3. And we're going to divide again, but there's something a little bit different about this one. I'm still dividing by a binomial, so I'm going to write x minus 3. However, when I get ready to write the numerator in the dividend spot, you notice I have an x cubed, but I'm missing an x squared. And you are actually going to need a column for the x squared. So we're going to make this column right here for the cubes. Now, if I'm going to create an x squared column, I just can't add x squared to my fraction. The only way I can add it is if it has a 0 in front of it, meaning I don't really have any. And you're going to see why we need to do that in just a minute. Just bear with me. So that's the squared column. Then I have negative 2x, so that's not missing. I have an x. And then I have a number, positive 5. So I have a column for x cubed, x squared, x, and then just numbers. And that's going to need to be the case on each of these. So let's start our division. How many times does x go into 3x cubed? x into 3x cubed, like that. This x cross cancels one of those, and what's left is 3x squared. And the place I have to put it is in the x squared column, which is why I had to create an x squared column. So I had somewhere to put the x squareds that came up in my division. We now multiply 3x squared times x is 3x cubed. 3x squared times negative 3 is negative 9x squared. We are going to draw the line, change the signs every time. This column makes a 0. 0x zero squareds plus 9x squareds are 9x squareds. Now we're ready to bring down one of our terms, so minus 2x, and we start again. How many times does x go into 9x squared? x into 9x squared goes positive 9x times. Make sure you're writing the signs, positive 9x, because sometimes it'll be a negative. Now we multiply. 9x times x is 9x squared. 9x times negative 3 is negative 27x. Draw the line, change the signs. This column makes a 0. A negative 2 and a positive 27 is a 25x, and we have one last term to bring down, positive 5, and we start again. How many times does x go into 25x? 
x into 25x goes positive 25 times. Multiply 25 times x is 25x. 25, 25 times negative 3 is negative 75. Draw the line, change the signs. That zeroes out. But here something different happened than the last one. I have an 80. And that 80 is my remainder. And when you are doing long division, one of your choices with the remainder is to write plus 80 over your divisor, x minus 3. So my final answer is 3x squared plus 9x plus 25 plus 80 over x minus 3. All right, we're going to do one more. This one is different because um, in the divisor, 3r squared, there is something missing. 3r squared and then a 2. So what is it that I don't have? I don't have an r. So we're going to write 3r squared plus 0r minus 2. So 3r squared plus 0r minus 2. Again, you're going to see why in just a minute. Let's see if anything's missing in the numerator. I have a 4, a 3, a 2, a 1, and, a, and just a number. Everything's good. So 6r to the 4th plus 9r cubed plus 2r squared minus 8r plus 7. Let's make columns. This is the r4 column. r3, r2, regular old r, and our numbers. And we begin with just the first term, 3r squared into 6r to the 4th. 3r squared into 6r to the 4th. 3 goes into 6 two times. These two cross cancel two of those. And what I have is 2r squared. So where's that going to go? In the r squared column. 2r squared. Now we're going to multiply. 2r squared times 3r squared, <clears throat> 6r to the 4th, excuse me. 2r squared times 0 is 0r cubed. So I had to have that to fill that slot. 2r squared times negative 2, negative 4r squared. Draw the line, change all the signs on the second one. That zeroes out. 9r cubed, take away 0r cubed is 9r cubed. 2r squared and 4r squared is 6r squared. And now I bring down my first term. And I begin again. How many times does 3r squared go into 9r cubed? 3 goes into 9 three times r squared cross cancels two of those and what I have is a positive 3r. So I write positive 3r. Notice it's in the r column. Everything in this column is squared. Everything in this column is cubed. Everything in this column is to the fourth. So we're keeping very organized. Now we multiply 3r times 3r squared 9r cubed 3r times 0r 0r squared, 3r times negative 2 minus 6r. Draw the line, change the signs. That zeroes out. 6r squared take away 0r squared is 6r squared. A negative 8 and a positive 6r is a negative 2r. And finally, bring down your last term. So that 7 comes right down here. And we begin again for the last time. 3r squared into 6r squared is just positive 2. My r squareds cross canceled. Multiply. 2 times 3r squared is 6r squared. 2 times 0r is 0r. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 
draw the line, change your signs. Zeros out. Here I have a negative 2r, and here I have an 11. This becomes my remainder, and since it is a minus, you can just write it as minus 2r plus 11. Let me scoot this over so you can see it. I'm going to write it bigger in a minute. Over my divisor, and I don't have to show that zero, over 3r squared minus 2. So let's write the whole thing again, the answer. 2r squared plus 3r plus 2 minus 2r plus 11 over 3r squared minus 2. Now you can also do this, plus a negative up there. And I did not mean to put those parentheses. That would not be correct because that would mean the negative got distributed and the 11 is definitely positive. So that's probably the best way to write your answer like that with your remainder.